best time to buy a home in 2024 will be the week of? Before I share the specific week, first we should talk about where the real estate market is, what got us to this point, and what you can expect from the rest of this video. I'll share a brief overview of the housing market in 2024 up to this point. The best week to buy a home and how to identify the best week to buy for your specific area. 2024 real estate market trends so you can understand where the puck is going the key benefits of buying a home during this specific time period and why it's important to act soon. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty, I need you to remember that real estate is local. The data and trends I'll share with you here may not be the same thing that you're experiencing in your local market, but today we're talking national trends. So think big picture and as promised, I'll share how to spot local trends too. One of the biggest real estate companies that you're probably familiar with just predicted that an upcoming week will be the best time to buy a home in 2024. Now let's be honest, if you've been in the market to buy a home, 2024 has been another tough year. Affordability is still at historic lows, housing inventories have remained lower than expected, and in certain areas in the Northeast, Midwest, and West Coast, inventory has remained extremely tight and prices have continued to climb. Now, there are Sunbelt states like Arizona, Texas, and Florida where I live that offer a higher number of homes for sale due to the amount of new construction going on and the slowing relocation patterns. But let's be real, the relief everyone was hoping for in the form of lower monthly mortgage payments and falling home prices hasn't really materialized yet. But according to a recent article by Realtor.com, a specific upcoming week could lead to an average savings of $14,000. If you pair that with the lowest interest rates we've seen since February of 2023, and a Federal Reserve that just lowered interest rates for the first time in four years, I think they could be right. So let's get in the overview and talk big picture here. Honestly, real estate has been in an absolute recession for the last two years. Now, when I say that, I don't mean home prices have been plummeting to the bottom of the universe, because that's not true, but sales have been slow. In the United States, we typically average a little over 5 million home sales a year annually. It can be more, it can be a little bit less, but we hover right around that 5 million homes sold mark every single year. For the last two years, it has been barely over 4 million homes, and that's been due to the higher interest rates that we've had. Again. The Federal Reserve is just lowering rates for the first time in four years. I mean, we've had incredibly high interest rates, making homes far less affordable than they were in the past. Wages have not kept up. We all know the reasons why it's hard to buy a home now, but that is what's been taking place in our real estate market. Now, what is unique about the upcoming fall season and why do you need to understand the specific date? So now it's time for the big reveal. According to Realtor.com, the best time to buy a home in 2024 will be the week of September 29th through October 5th. Now the real question is why? Why did they choose that week and will that week be the most important week to you as a home buyer? It's a great question. They're basing this around the fact that inventory should be lower. That is a very normal trend in terms of seasonality. Real estate is cyclical. We typically get busier in the spring and summer months, and then it starts to fall off in that fall season into the holidays. Now, July, August, September, these areas kind of merge together. Sometimes July is the peak home selling season. Sometimes it's August. Other years, it's been September. It just really depends on what's going on, but it usually falls sometimes around that time period and that happens because kids are typically going back to school, parents don't wanna be moving during that time period, and the world tends to slow down as we come into the holidays. That's a very normal trend, and then it starts to pick back up through the holidays, actually. Dives back down, usually in January and February, because no one wants to move when it's cold. I know that here in the Sun Belt, that's not the same thing. Um, we have a busier season in January and February because we have so many people who tend to migrate south for the winter. They pick up second homes, vacation homes. That's very normal to us. But during this time period, what Realtor.com is saying that you should expect to have more inventory to choose from. There are gonna be lower prices. That of course is normal as well. There is a seasonal price decrease. That happens pretty normal and regularly. And there's going to be less competition in the marketplace. I tend to agree with all those things. I think that that is a fair assessment of what is taking place as we see it right now in the marketplace. And their guesstimate is that you should see roughly about $14,000 off of peak prices. Now, depending where you are locally, this number could be significantly higher. I know where I live in Southwest Florida here, I'm in the Tampa area 
area just to the south of us in Cape Coral, Fort Myer, areas like that, we are seeing dramatic price decreases regularly on, on, on houses and inventory. Here in the Tampa Bay area, for the first time in almost five years, we finally came in at a flat number, meaning that we didn't increase in home prices, but we didn't decrease either. And that is a, a huge change from the 5, 10, 15, as much as 20% we were seeing year over year over the last four. So this is going to be very local. What I would say for you is make sure that you're looking at your local market trends. You can use tools like realtor.com and look at specific local areas. You can use uh, tools like Redfin, Zillow. They all have tools that you can look at what's happening in your specific marketplace. So you definitely wanna dial in and know what is happening in your local market. I sell in two markets. I have a real estate team in Metro Detroit where I moved from. I have a partner up there where we sell real estate still actively and I live here in Tampa Bay and I have a real estate team here as well. Our markets are two different worlds. Up in Metro Detroit, they aren't building a whole lot of new houses, so there's a lot of competition for those homes. The Northeast has seen tremendous competition on those homes because there's not a lot of homes being built. And again, think of where you live, and this is going to be a reflection of that. Here where I live in Tampa Bay, we've built almost as many houses as anywhere else in this country, and that has put a lot of downward pressure like we were talking about. Now. When it comes to market trends and where is the puck going in 2024 and into 2025, the thing you need to be aware of is there is slower buyer demand. Again, I said 4 million homes approximately are gonna sell this year. That's about a million off of where we should be. And that is happening because of these elevated interest rates. It's been four years since the Federal Reserve has cut rates. That's put a lot of pressure on home affordability and not everyone can afford to buy homes. All right, we are gonna to continue to see increased inventory. That should happen in the Northeast. Again, that's more seasonal there um, in, the, in the Midwest and in the Western states. Not as many people move. You'll, you'll continue to see more inventory come to the market. Um, and you might even see some of the highest levels you've seen since pre-pandemic, going back to 2019, 2018. Like I said, here in Florida, we're already back at those levels. And it's really gonna be about where are you living? So understand the regional differences when it comes to where you're living. The South versus the Northeast versus the Midwest versus the West Coast, right? All of these things are important to understand. And even more affordable options come into play because of builders. Where I live here, we've got builders offering incentives like flex cash that you can use towards your down payment. That's a huge advantage to home buyers. And they're also offering low promotional interest rates. We typically see somewhere between one and one and a half percent below the prime rate. I'm not gonna get too far in the weeds there, but that offers a lot of opportunity. This past week, I have an investor who's looking at a new four bedroom Room, two and a half bath in a outstanding lagoon community that is being built right now for $350,000. They're offering $10,000 in um, in flex cash, like we said, and he got quoted a rate of 4.90. Today's interest rates are about 6.15. That is an awesome opportunity, and that changes the game on affordability. So make sure you're focusing on your local market and asking great questions. Now, if you need help analyzing this data or being connected to a great real estate agent where you are locally, please feel free to reach out to me and my team. I have a huge network of real estate professionals all across the country that can get you to opportunities like we're discussing now. Most importantly, they can help you analyze data and get you to information so you can make qualified decisions. Now I wanna share some of those key benefits of buying in early October, and I believe probably through the entire season up to the holiday. You know, we're gonna have higher inventory, that is my belief, with more options for home buyers out there. Depending on your local market, remember, this is going to be specific specific to your region and your area. Another big factor is you're gonna have lower competition from other home buyers. Remember, interest rates have been higher, keeping people on the sidelines for longer, okay? That typically leaves a slower pace of market, meaning that you're gonna have more time to make decisions. And where I live, we're actually back to a neutral, even leaning into a buyer market, which gives us the real great flexibility of being able to heavily negotiate prices repairs, concession, compensation, there's all types of benefits that come along with that. But I do wanna give one caveat here. We just talked about the Federal Reserve. It is likely that there could be another 50 to 75 basis points of reduced interest rates before the end of the year or into that spring market. And y'all, for every one full percent that the interest rates come down for a home buyer, the average home buyer in the United States gets about $50,000 in buying power. So kind of think about that. 
there is going to be a specific time where this is no longer a competitive advantage. That's why I love this fall time period. Seasonally, this is for the serious buyers. It's for the serious sellers. We're getting a, a, a head start on interest rates lowering. We don't know how much lower they're gonna go. And I do wanna caution people because we have seen people try to wait this out before. And I wanna give a specific example here. On February 2nd of 2023, mortgage interest rates dipped down to 5.99% on the average day daily rate. A month later, on March 2nd, they were back up to 7.10. That is a drastic and dramatic change. And I want to caution anybody who's sitting on the sidelines. I can't predict where rates are going to go. We can't predict where rates are going to go. So please be cautious about this. Be mindful about it. Make informed decisions, but it's looking like a really good opportunity. Again, my belief is that interest rates are going to continue to trend downward. Are they going to get back to the low 5%? I don't see that happening. There would have to be a lot of jobs lost in order for that to occur. That's not good for anyone. Um, however, as we get closer to those mid five numbers, I do believe that more homeowners who have been sitting on the sidelines because they've got three and a half percent interest rates or 4% interest rates and have wanted to sell, they're going to start listing their homes, which again is going to be a benefit to buyers. I think we're going to get to a more balanced and a very normalized market here over the next year if things stay steady. But of course, I cannot predict what is going to happen in the future. I think Ray Dalio says it best. He who lives by the crystal ball is destined to eat glass, and I don't want to participate in that, but it is looking like a great time to purchase a home this fall. So make sure you're taking advantage of this window. And one last thing I'd love to know from you is I would love to know what your spring predictions are on interest rates. Let me know in the comments down below. My guess is we're going to be tipping into that five and a quarter point range, maybe five and a half. Again, I don't have a crystal ball, but I love playing predictions. And I, I know a lot of people enjoy that, that as well. Um, if we get to that point come February or March, man, it could be a really active uh, both selling season for home sellers and for home buyers. Because remember, you can do things like buy down interest rates you know if it gets to five and a half or five and a quarter you're gonna see you know people being able to buy down their mortgage rates back into that high four area man the market could really use that um, in terms of affordability well I don't know that there's gonna be this big rush like we saw in 2021 22 in terms of craziness I just don't see that a lot of people um, made I think moves prematurely they may have not thought through it all the way or they were they thought they were running away from maybe political issues or things like that. I'm not sure, but I do know people that have had buyer's remorse because they just acted too soon. So um, I love a market where you're able to make informed decisions. You're able to think through it. You can go see a property that's for sale, go home with your significant other, have a, an adult conversation, maybe even sleep on it and make an informed decision that is really right for you and your family about whether it is time to make a move. And you know, if you're considering moving here to the Tampa Bay area, just know that me and my team has got your back. If you're looking to move anywhere else in the country and you need to be connected to an agent, don't hesitate to reach out to me and my team. And if you'd like to know more about what's happening here locally in Tampa Bay, YouTube's going to put two videos up here that it thinks you're going to love. And until next time, and as always, go out and live that Tampa life.